so we're going to be pursuing the lovely Lady Margaret. <laughs> Should be interesting to see what differences we find. Uh, hmm. Only thing I wish I could like know exactly like which one of these safe states I could just start from, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'd have to start from the beginning, unfortunately. Because I have no idea if I had any important decisions in the beginning that would have affected my relationship with her. So, oh uh, well. Sorry, save states. So I'll leave the second page for, for her. Uh, hello, Justin. Are you done with whatever mission you were doing? More like Lake of Yuri. Oh! <laughs> Can't wait to finish this fish. You're making a fish? Is that what you're squil uh, quilling? Is there a skip function? I don't know. Let me see. Oh, yes, it looks like. Uh, skip. I'm kind of confused. Unseen text? I don't want to skip unseen text. Transitions? I don't know what they mean. Got all the bad guys in Red Dev online. Okay. It's your country? I'm confused, sign. So I don't know what they mean Am I skipping until unseen text? We know because if I'm pursuing someone else after choices, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. Maybe I'll just leave it as it is for now. I am confuzzled. But before we start with that, uh, I would like you guys to see the bonus thing that I saw. Okay, so welcome to the bonus event section. There are three bonus events in total, one that does not include spo story spoilers and two that do. The first event is unlocked by getting any ending where Kika crosses Sinlos and reaches the other side alive. The other events are unlocked by getting a specific ending. Right now, you only have one event unlocked. We hope you enjoy it. So unfortunately, I only have this one. Uh, I saw it at the end of that stream that day and I kind of was telling you guys, it's hilarious. But I'm gonna play through it right now, it's really quick. Um, I think you guys are gonna really enjoy it. Since Romania is shaped like a fish, it is? Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know much about Romania, unfortunately. Okay, let's watch A Magical Night. Okay, uh, first of all, how's the volume, you guys? I've been having to mess with the volume settings a lot while recording Danganronpa lately with Inferno. Um, like, the game and Inferno were so quiet compared to me. I was always so freaking loud. So I had to keep messing with it, and uh, so I was just worried. It's okay? I'm not too loud? Alright. Good. I am glad. Okay. I forgot I really like the art and the music in this game. I'm running. I keep running and running, and I can't stop. If I do, then... Ah! This is not voice acted, I don't think. It all happens in an instant. I'm suddenly falling forward, my feet slipping from underneath me. Oh, well, thank you, Justin. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I always have fun recording with Inferno, and we have a lot of interesting conversations <laughs> in between recording sessions. I hit the boards, and everything goes black. Arden, or excuse, all right. Bits and pieces of sounds make their way into my ears. I can't understand what they mean. All the noises threaten to rouse me from sleep. My groggy body protests. I'm not ready to wake up yet. Hello? Or, I guess that person. Hello? 
My silent pleading, oh no, that was her. <laughs> My silent pleading does no good, and what I now realize is a voice calling out for me continues. Well, hello, anime star. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining. My heavy eyelashes flutter open. Creepy. You're awake. Thank goodness. It's always so creepy to see these creatures. Like, the fact that their body's all twisted around and all that, it's like, oh my god. I rub the back of my head while sitting up and taking in the surroundings. Oh. God. Coco, I'm so sad. If it wasn't for the fact that you were sick, I was gonna invite you to join me for this... for this stream. <laughs> because I still am suspicious that you did the voice acting for Kika. She sounds so much like you. I would have had you voice a lot of it. <laughs> new waifu. Uh, it's a man, but new husbando, I suppose. Innocently whistling. <laughs> a man stands before me. He is tall, with slender fingers and the most enchanting eyes I have ever seen. <laughs> like, what? Kika, I know you hit your head, but oh my god. How are his eyes enchanting? He extends a hand out in my direction, offering to help me up. Nervously, I accept. Thank you. It is no trouble. I couldn't possibly leave a lady alone out here in a state like that. Who are you? My name is Dillert. Yeah, weird name, but okay. <laughs> Slenderman too. My eyes widen. It's such a unique name. Ah, uh, you forgot the S, Justin, but okay, you want to whip the poor Slenderman husbando? <laughs> it's such a unique name. I can't help wondering if it's foreign. <laughs> you feel weird. <laughs> He's a Danganronpa blackened before being exposed. <laughs> yeah. I'm Kika. Well, Kika the Steadfast. But I don't want to brag about having a title. The elders of my village just gave it to me because I do so much for them. And hello, Louisa Darling. Welcome to the stream. And hello, Poker Girl. You're doing well? How remarkable. Not really. You are too modest, Kika. Tell me, what brings you out to this neck of the bridges? I have to assume it isn't for the fine scenery. <laughs> well, this is uh, an interesting, creepy creature that normally we'd be running away from, but for some reason he's being nice to us. I, I don't know what's going on. It's so weird. I hope that the darkness of the night covers my cheeks, which have, which have to have gone red by now. Dillard makes for some very fine scenery, and he's charming, too. Oh my god, like, why? Kika, why are you so in infatuated by this creature? I don't understand. Somehow, I can't seem to remember. Everything before you got here is a blur. I'm terribly sorry. In that case, I suppose you wouldn't know the way to the shore, either. No. I could escort you there if you wish. As long as you don't try to kill me, we're all good, man. I... Uh... I know, right? I shouldn't... I shouldn't judge. I'm being shallow. I'm sorry. He's probably a perfectly nice gentleman, despite being strangely shaped. Um, I shouldn't judge, yeah. Let's see. I would appreciate it. Then escort you, I shall. Yes, just listen to the music change into the romantic music. <laughs> he seems like your Kurokyo voice would fit him. Really? <laughs> My Kurokyo voice. Ugh, every time I do it, I'm like, I'm sorry, Louisa. I know it's not sexy like Habercorn, but that's just how I see him. 
And honestly, there's so many male characters, I was kind of limited on what I could do anyway. <laughs> Just look at how his eyes bleed white, simply irresistible. <laughs> then escort you a shell. You like that? That's better? <laughs> Creepy voice for him. Thank you. You're gonna call him Dirt? <laughs> Is he like the beast? Well, I guess so. I'm. She's beauty and he's the beast. That's fine. Tumblr's gonna have a field day with me? What? Leave me alone, Tumblr. Oh, my voice works for Correcchio? Okay, good. The two of us begin walking side by side. It's embarrassing to be standing so close together, but the bridges aren't too wide and it is still nice. I sneak a glance at him. <laughs> um, Dillard, what were you doing before coming across me? I was merely taking a stroll. I see. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. You have done no such thing. In truth, even if you had not needed my assistance to find your way back, I had hoped to invite you to join my walk regardless. I'm Dillard. We walk in silence, enjoying one another's presence. So, Kika, can you remember anything else? I'm not sure. Can you tell me about yourself instead? What do you do for a living? He chuckles and I blush. I hope I didn't seem too eager. <laughs> I don't have a career per se. I'm quite self-sufficient. There's no need for me to go out and work to support myself. I see. I do enjoy spending my time walking these bridges and encountering all the unique individuals who do the same. Bendy and the ink machine. <laughs> You're laughing. I was laughing hard when I played this part. Yeah. Do you usually take walks with them? No, this is the first time. Somehow, I, it felt like I couldn't leave you alone. I see. Look at that. She's blushing. Oh my god. He could know. What about Baymalay? What about Margaret? Much too soon, the shore comes into view. One of old boards, one of the old boards, of the dock breaks as I step on it. OT4. <laughs> yes, next time we get attacked by these creatures, I'm going to be like, Oh my god, Dillard! Dillard, my love! Is that you? <laughs> and he's just going to kill me. <laughs> I begin falling backwards like a typical shoujo anime girl. <laughs> My eyes shut and I brace for the impact. But it never comes. My descent was stopped by something sturdy and all inky too. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I have to say, I love these game developers. Why did they do this? <laughs> Dillert Chan. <laughs> I cautiously opened my eyes again. Dillard caught me, and I'm being held in his arms. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. We're so close. She's gonna squee. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot. Kiss him. Do it. <laughs> I don't know why. I lean in, removing the little distance remaining between us. Oh, nice. It went cute little pink. <laughs> we part quickly, both bashful. I appreciate <laughs> you're so done. <laughs> I appreciate you walking me back. It was my pleasure. Sadly, I must return now. Farewell, Kika the Steadfast. May our paths in this maze called life cross again. Yes. Man, y'all move fast. Y'all just met and you're already kissing and all that. <laughs> this is what it's like to eat black ink burgers. All I can do 
is watch as he disappears into the mist. Goodbye, Dillard. After that, I went back to my normal life. Sometimes it seems like that time where I kissed him under the moonlight was just a dream. No, I shake off such thoughts. I have to believe it was real, and that one day we will meet again. And no matter what happens, I'll always remember that magical night. Best ending! Thank you for playing! <laughs> I love this game. Bay Malay, wondering how Diller got further than he did. Yes. Alright, that was awesome. So I just want you guys to see that. <laughs> so funny. So, let's start the game for real. Alright. Uh, certain choices are timed. Time running out isn't something to completely avoid. Okay. I forgot about that. If you survive until the second night, the story will branch into one of five different plot lines based on your earlier decisions. Okay. If you come in closer, your decision to build that connection may not. Yeah. Okay. We've read this before. In this one, we are going to be working on getting Margaret. And then, in a future stream, I will work on... Probably uh, the redhead guy or the guide. Because I'm very curious what would happen with the guide because he's such a jerk. It's like, <laughs> how could she fall for him? I don't understand. So I'm, I'm very curious. But yes. So now uh, it's no longer Bay Malay. It's going to be just Bamele. Be like, uh, you my buddy, but we're not gonna cross that border because, uh, my heart belongs to Margaret. So, <laughs> okay, um, can I skip until choices? Oh, okay, good. Uh, you're quite informed, Margaret. Yes, we can skip until choices. This will help us save a lot of time. Uh, I'm so sorry if anybody missed the past streams of this game, because uh, then I feel like right now I, I don't want to play through all that again. But let me give you a brief synopsis. I know for sure Anime Star and I think Poker Girl did not watch, um, but basically our name is Kika and we are like a warrior uh, from a certain village and us and our companion uh, Bemele we were instructed to cross these bridges in order to get to a certain town and warn them about something, I think. And uh, at first there was this whole thing where we had to decide if we were going to go with this woman, Margaret, because she also wants to cross the bridges. And they're actually like magical bridges that only appear at night or something. And um, because this lake is filled with these monsters, these creatures, uh, which we just saw what they look like. I forgot what they're called. Um, but yeah, there's this guide who's supposed to be helping us, but sometimes he's a total douche and is all, like... I feel like he doesn't care if we die, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we, we got to know Margaret and we became good friends with her and I was like, oh, T3! And I was hoping the three of them would get together, but it didn't happen. But I ended up with my partner in the first playthrough. But this time we'll be going for this lovely lady, Margaret, instead. So yeah, that's about it. Um, I survived the first time. I, I, don't know, I, I did die once. But yeah, we, we did pretty well in our first playthrough. Uh, hopefully I won't let Margaret die or anyone else, but we'll see. Oh my god, Justin, please. <laughs> okay, this is new. Um... I can't remember what parts are voice acted. Where's the voice acting? No, oh no, that's right. I can't, uh... Actually, let me start saving. Never mind. Let me start saving on the second page. Settings. Voice volume. I didn't hear anything. Oh well. <clears throat> It's been years since the time of Garvin the Exemplar. It 
it's impressive you knew. Margaret smiles. Oh, she's cute. It's like she's blushing. Lifting her chin into the air. The over-exaggerated action is somehow pleasant rather than belittling. She's so much happier than I had anticipated. Yes, I do like to stay informed. And you knew too. Good. This lake shouldn't be allowed to swallow even history itself. My town, the one where I was born at least, was also Garvin's hometown. I was very young when he passed. The entire village went into mourning. There's the voice acting. <laughs> okay. People broke down crying in the streets. I'll never forget it. He meant much to everyone who knew him. Oh, I have no such connections. I merely read about it. She pauses, seeming to scan the air in front of her for something to say. I'm sorry for your loss. It's all right. Thank you. Yeah, they both have nice voices. Um, one of them I know for sure, Elsie Lovelock. I like her, her song covers on YouTube, and I know she does the voice acting in the letter as well. And I was like, whoa, holy crap. <laughs> Uh, but Kika has a great voice, and sometimes I really am like, oh my god, she reminds me of Coco. My town may have taken pride in Garvin the Exemplar and what he achieved, but we weren't the ones who lost the most. That would be his family. We each remain locked inside our own thoughts, not another word passing between us. Okay, so this is when the guide appears, so I think we can skip this part until the next decision. Uh, I believe we should go. And I believe you. Okay. Oh, this is new text. It must be because I already cited with uh, Margaret once. I admire her resilience. It's comforting to know that everyone here is so confident in their abilities. Not enough to forget how terrible it feels to be over this lake. I'm not sure if that is fortunate or unfortunate. Believing yourself to be secure doesn't mean that you are. Ooh, that creepy whispering noise. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. As the conversation lulls, a new sound breaks through. It's the whispering noise again. It's the chatter of inhuman voices, and this time coming from all around us. Taking care of yourself is exactly what you need to do. I totally agree with Justin, yes. The guide is speaking again, except louder, as if to cover the Nixie's voices with his own. Work to survive at all costs, and hope that everyone around you has enough sense to do the same. That's the only way you'll make it to the other side. Margaret nods in response, but I hear a grunt from behind me. Groups tend to go further when they work together to achieve the same goal. Okay, is this them going to be arguing? Uh, oh, oh shoot, I see the creature behind him. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna nod seriously because I'm sorry, but Mele, you are not my bae anymore. Nod seriously. But Mele's face hards and hardens in return. I'm sorry, I don't love you anymore. He moves his free arm down. I fully link his arm with mine, and now properly settled, look forward. Margaret is following the guide with some reluctance turning back every so often to check on us. I know, right? Dillard! My baby Dillard! I know you- I know! I'm so sorry! <laughs> I wave my lantern to signal we're catching up. His kokoro go brokoro. <laughs> Margaret returns her head to the front and quickens her pace. With a tug on Bamele, we start to follow them. Uh, I know we're gonna have like timed responses and that's the only problem with skipping it's like how am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to do in that moment <laughs> it's gonna be scary okay skip uh oh Dillard don't do it Dillard I thought you loved me man 
I don't notice how tense I am until Bemele eases my grasp on his arm. I think uh, Dillard is angry because I chose Margaret over him. Oh dear. Then suddenly, the guy takes multiple long and fast strides forward, throws the lantern, and jumps backwards to regain the lost distance. Meredith! Hello! Oh, that's such a cute little thing! Little panda with the Santa outfit! How are you, Meredith, my darling? I did pop in on Nin stream recently, like a couple days ago. But you weren't there, and I'm sure you were busy working, you poor thing. And I just haven't... <sighs> I haven't been able to go to many of Nin's streams lately. So busy. <laughs> Nothing like a good pair of dog legs. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. There's a sharp hiss, and then a deep splash, and the voices of the Nixie grow quieter. Not silent, but quieter. Aw, oh, and Pup is here too! Hello, Pup! Aw, both of my beloveds are here. Using another cute little emoji icon. Ooh. I hope you're doing well today too, Pup. I know you always need a break, because, man, you are a busy man always helping people with their streams. <laughs> Sai escapes me, and the guide comes back to our group. We should keep going, before it comes back. Yeah. Oh, thank you for the host, Coco. I appreciate that. Can I skip again? <gasps> oh! Oh, crap. <laughs> Dillard just attacked, like, all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, good thing I reacted fast enough to save uh, Bamele, who is my friend. I just miss going to Nin's streams. I've just been so busy. It's so frustrating. <laughs> You're just tired and you've been napping, cuddling with Nova today? Good. Enjoy your cuddles. Aw, oh, poor Meredith has been so busy working or sleeping. I understand. Thank you for the host, Meredith. I appreciate it. This is like fatal attraction. <laughs> Dill Diller is like, if I can't have her, nobody can. <laughs> Okay, so I just saved Bamele. Kika, thank you. Oh no! I can't respond. Something cold, wet, and slimy has grabbed my ankle. I gotta fight back! Dillert, no! <laughs> Yan Dillert. <laughs> nice one, Coco. Yandere, Dillert, no! Kick it off. I'm sorry. I don't love you anymore. I kick my leg out as fast as I can, and the Nix's hold slips. It can't pull with the momentum I've gained against it. Margaret rushes to my side, her lantern hanging out towards the Nix. The light brushes its face. We see it for an instant, its eyes wide, and then it slides back into the smooth surface of the water. Okay. Bamele grabs Margaret and I both, helping us towards the center of the bridge and cussing under his breath. I only looked away for one second. Yeah. It's fine, Bamele. We're all fine. <sighs> Are you actually all right? Margaret cocks her head down, examining my ankle, but there's nothing but a wet smudge against my trousers. I am fine. I say that, though I don't actually want to let go of Bamele. I need to, in order to relight our lantern and provide us actual safety, but I feel such a strong desire not to be alone in this moment. No! You're not supposed to hang on to him! No! You're supposed to be in love with Margaret this time, okay? Why am I talking with an accent? Oh my god. <laughs> I think Margaret uh, affected me with her accent there. <laughs> I shake my head roughly and let go of him. Relighting the lantern as fast as I'm able. Kika, thank you. Again. You saved my life. I won't let this happen again. Yes. Yes. It would be good for all of us to pay more attention. 
Margaret nods solemnly. Suddenly it feels it seems like we're all on the same side. It isn't only Bamelli and I. She is with us in more than simply presence. You think she looks kind of like me? Eh, kind of. Different hair. I mean, my hair could look like that. Uh, let's save. Yeah, let's save over that, actually. The guide's voice, as cold as that monster's grip, grasp, ends my train of thought. We lost the lantern I threw, and Nick grabbed it after the light went out. Margaret makes a noise. I glance over, wondering whether she's upset, but there's a small smile on her face instead. It's better than them taking anything else. That's true. A nervous laugh bubbles up out of me, and just as quickly stops. Bimale- Oh my god, I keep wanting to say Bimale. No! <laughs> Bimale chucks in response, and our collective tension eases up, the adrenaline draining from our bodies. We need to keep walking. Okay, can I skip again? Uh... Current format... I'd like to move up, thank you. I don't I don't know if that was the right choice, because I don't know what the question was. Dang, damn it. Wait, history? What was... What were they discussing? Can't cross with him either. I know the guard will be here tonight. Wait, what? Where is this? Oh, here we are. Uh, what did she say? OT3 is true and yes. Wait, what was... I don't know the question. Margaret made an offer. You, since you two have to share a light, wouldn't it be safer to be in the middle? That way you'll catch the edges of my light and the guides. Uh, it's a very kind offer. Now, okay, by agreeing with her, is that the right thing to do? Okay, I think I made the right choice because I'm pursuing her. Phew. Margaret stands slightly off to the side to let us pass, careful not to get too close to the water's edge. Yeah, it might be dangerous, actually, Coco. That's why I'm a little concerned. But I did agree with her, so maybe that won me points with her? I don't know. Thank you kindly, Margaret. I nod at her. Bamele and I position ourselves a few feet away from the guide, and in no time we've fallen into step in our new positions. So, I don't want to sound like a child, but... How much longer until we arrive at the halfway point? God, I hope Margaret doesn't die because of that decision. <laughs> Margaret chuckles, reflecting the amusement I don't want to vocalize. We still have some ways to go. Damn. <laughs> I forgot how funny he is. Uh, okay. The first trial tends to be the most difficult. I believe we will only react better from this point on. I like the way you think. OT3. Yes. Then a gleam enters Bamele's eyes and he grins. I think Kika deserves a round of applause. Her quick reflexes are owed the utmost appreciation. Oh, okay. This is him trying to woo, woo me over. It worked last time, but it's not going to work this time, okay? I'm sorry. Okay. It's strange in the middle, watching over the guide. Until now, I didn't notice how smooth his movements are. There's a sense of grace to his actions, even in the basic task of walking down a bridge. I have to actively stop myself from being distracted by- Are you seriously checking the guide out? Why? Why are you checking him out? He's a total douche nozzle. Why? You're supposed to be in love with Margaret. You stop that. You stop that right now. Suddenly, Oh no, here we go. This is the stressful part. I notice the guide seems to be getting further away from us. He's speeding up. I do the same to match his pace and end up moving at a light jog. This is the part where I don't understand him. Like, it's almost like he was really trying to get us killed. Guide, why are we going faster? He doesn't reply, doesn't even look back at me. Instead, his speed almost doubles. 
I glance back worried, but Margaret is keeping up with us. The guide keeps moving faster and faster, until finally we're at an all-out sprint. Figures in the dark fog fly past us at a blur, and it occurs to me the branching paths in the bridge appear to be sinking. Yes, I will definitely do the guide's route at some point, because I'm so curious about him. I swallow my rising panic. The guide shouts something, but it's drowned out by the frantic pounding of our footsteps. Ah, that sucks that we couldn't hear him. I'm trying to piece together what he said. Don't. Stop. Turn? When he takes a masterfully, eh, masterfully sharp right down a different path, using his own momentum and the sleek wood to slide into the new direction with no loss of speed. Ah, Coco, so... I don't know if you remember, but last time... When we had Margaret behind the guide, she didn't follow him, and she went the other way, and we had to go, like, pretty much save her. I mean, we had a decision, but I chose to save her. Um, but this time, because we're in the middle, maybe we can prevent that issue from happening? So maybe this is a good thing. <laughs> Despite the, s the sudden turn, my reflexes enable me to keep close behind him. There we go. We're making a right! Good. Okay, so now we don't have to worry about that other thing. Bamele is on my heels, following me to the turn. I glance back once more. Margaret, although further behind than before, also makes the turn. We're all still together. Ah! Okay, so this was the right choice then. As the night wears on, our strength rapidly fades. Even my stamina is being challenged. I can't imagine what this must be like for Margaret. She's holding her side as she runs, clearly cramping from the exercise. How much longer will this last? People have to rest sometime. Almost as if in response to my thought, the guide abruptly halts. I skid to a stop as well, sliding on the surface of the wood. <sighs> Why did we stop? Bamele's voice is tired, but his guard is up. The guy doesn't answer, just stares at something slightly out of view. I step up to join him, following his gaze further down the path. Oh, the redhead. I can't wait to do his, too. I'm so curious about him. I felt bad leaving him behind, but um, I did look into it after I finished playing the game, and... I had to leave him behind in order to get the happy ending with uh, Baymalay. <laughs> and I'm going to have to do that again for Margaret. Because if I go with him, I'm officially on his route. And we're not doing his route today. So, unfortunately, that means we have to leave him to die again. Uh, I feel bad. I'm sorry. You're a sweet person, I bet. Maybe. I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know the question, so I'm going to let it time out. I can't risk it. Uh, what was the question there? Um, uh, let's see. Oh, okay. The choice was if I was going to stop him from leaving. I did the right thing by not stopping him because I have to let him go. Hello, Smooth. Welcome to the stream. It's okay, Sign. I'll play it and you'll see what happens. <laughs> Can't wait to do everyone, eh, Banks? <laughs> Justin, please. I can't risk it. I'm sorry, random stranger. Okay, uh, Margaret, wait. Okay, we skipped a lot of drama, but that's okay. <laughs> My voice was too soft for her to hear me. Lingering for only a moment, I start following the trail Margaret took. So now we will finally get to hear more about Margaret. She looks like she's crying. Oh, I forgot she lost her glasses. Yeah. 
I catch up with Margaret, and I notice that her eyes are glistening with tears. As I try to move closer, she turns on me sharply. What do you want? I take a step back and keep my voice low. I was worried. Oh, why is she mad at me? Well, there certainly is a lot to be worried about. I can tell she does not appreciate my concern, but that's only to be expected. I've seen people react to grief and death in dozens of different ways, and she has every reason to be upset sitting on an island surrounded by a lake that breeds death. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive through the next night. So... That's not the problem. Her words begin strong, but falter and soften as she speaks. I can only watch her, without the slightest idea of what to do. Margaret sits atop a large mass of roots and covers her face with her hands. I step over to her and kneel down so that I can be at eye level again. Margaret? Oh. She twists her body away from me. Leave me alone. No. I will not leave you. Yes! Get it, girl! <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Margaret huffs, looking my way again, only to properly glare. Do you even know why I came out here? It wasn't as though I had anywhere important to be. Really? Tell me why. Then... why? Why would you risk this journey? Surely you already know the heart of my distress. Haven't you ever considered what you would do if you weren't able to be a guard? Hmm? She makes a point too good to dismiss, and I inwardly flinch when I consider it. Yes. I originally sought this path not because I wished to protect others, but because I was concerned for my own self. Oh, okay. This is interesting. So, first of all, let me save. It's been a while. Um, I'm trying to read between the lines. Basically, this is in, like, an olden time kind of fantasy world. And I'm going to assume, based on the way they dress and all that, that uh, back then there wasn't much... Uh, women didn't have much rights and stuff. So I'm going to assume that if she hadn't become a soldier, that there was very limited jobs that women could do. So maybe she ended up having to do something to get by that was not, not very pleasant. And I'm kind of just guessing here. I hope that's not the case, but it probably is. I don't blame you. If I had your coordination and ability, I would have learned to fight as well. As it stands, I cannot change what I am. The settlement I come from is small, barely staving off collapse, really. The same as your town. You don't have to tell me which it is. They are all that way. Mm. My only real skill is the knowledge I've worked so hard to obtain. But, of course, a tiny village full of starving hunter-gatherers doesn't have much use for someone well-versed in history or management theories. Ah, I see. This is actually the year 2069. <laughs> uh, Poker Girl, uh, I don't, it's hard to say what you missed because you didn't watch the last time I streamed the game either. Uh, all I can say is that we've made some decisions and uh, so far everything's working out. Everybody's still alive. We made it to the island safely. Um, and right now we're trying to... Trying to uh, work into the whole romance part with Margaret. She's pretty upset with me, but I think... I think we'll be okay. Even if there are positions that require such knowledge, they are always given to those who are far older than myself. So what am I supposed to do? Continue to barely survive by being one of many seamstresses? Keep being pushed around by any person more powerful or with higher social connections? Mm. Leaving there would only take me back to the same position. It won't ever change that way. She drops her head into her hands and sobs. My heart aches as I kneel beside her, watching her shuddering form. I feel helpless, but what can I do? These problems are much different from what I have dealt with. 
Eventually, Margaret seems to pull herself together. No. I was tired of accepting those options. Sinlos was my only chance. Only now do I realize how ridiculous a notion that is. Anyone who comes to this lake with a sense of hope will surely have it crushed. I won't let you die. Are you saying you wanted to become a guide? Yes. Laugh at my ambition if you wish. People may fear the current guide and may even blame him for the people he cannot save. But at least he has respect. Not only that, the heads of the area give him enough support to live a comfortable life. Ooh, but for you to become a guide, this would be your life. You would always be risking it. Oh, that's scary. From all I'd gathered about the lake, being strong or good with a weapon didn't matter a lick. The most important qualities for a guide were being observant and shrewd, and being able to look past the struggles of someone else. Hmm. And how wrong I was. Her voice rises. I haven't the slightest ability to deal with sinking bridges and confrontations with those horrible monsters. And even though I thought I'd lost all ability to care about the troubles of others, I still feel awful about what happened earlier. Yeah. I haven't a chance of making it as a guide, which means I have no hope anywhere. Oh, my poor babe. She covers her face once more and resumes her cries. Hesitantly, I reach out and place my hand on her shoulder. Surprisingly, she doesn't shake it off. We sit quietly like that for several moments. I don't know what the answer is. In that kind of world, if she doesn't have the physicality, it's like, I don't know what she can do. And being a seamstress would be so miserable. Like, what if she becomes like, um... She's smart. Like, can't she become like a medicine woman or something? Like, not a doctor, but... Whatever they have back then. I'm sure they have women who um, put together medicines and, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. But yeah, I, I feel like that would be a good route. You don't have to be a guide. Once this is over, you never have to come back here. There has to be something else out there for you. And if something does not yet exist, then we can create it ourselves. Yes, those are good other terms that I was kind of trying to think of. Like an herbalist, apothecary, chemist. Or a teacher, yeah. I'm sure they would need teachers for the little kids, even if... Well, I think they had, um... They had written stuff, so I think they can read and write, but maybe... Maybe the reading and writing is limited to the upper class still? I don't know. But she's able to read, and she's smart, so... Hmm. I don't know. There has to be something. And it's nice that Kika's offering to help her. If something does not yet exist, then we could create it ourselves. Yeah. Margaret chortles a bit. What a silly idea. But if I did have to choose between returning to the normal world or staying here, I'd rather go back home. Even a midwife, yes. She can be Miss Frizzle with the hair. Um, uh, a medicine witch? Why not a doctor? Yeah. I squeeze her shoulder, and she at last looks up at me, the tears gone from her eyes. Thank you for sharing this with me. Thank you for listening. You have an unexpectedly soft heart. Oh yeah, she has a lovely heart. And it's all for you! <laughs> She must have noticed the slight twinge in my face. That isn't a bad thing, Kika. Ah, uh, you made more ba baked mac and cheese. Oh, I'm so jealous. You should share the picture you shared with me. I was, I was like, literally wanting to drool. I was so sad. <laughs> I look away, eyes towards the ground. I know it can hurt to care. But it also lets you lessen the pain of others. I think it would be much better if everyone cared a little bit more, rather than less. I feel tears forming in my eyes now as I smile back at Margaret. Thank you. Aww, they're so cute. Margaret returns my look. 
I take a seat on the roots beside her, and for a time we sit in silence, simply being there for one another. Eventually, I turn towards her. Perhaps we should go check how everything is on the island. Margaret nods. That seems like a fair thing to do. We can't keep sitting here forever, unfortunately. I'll come with you. Are you sure you'll be alright without your glasses? There are a lot of places to catch your foot or dress on. Margaret laughs lightly. I'm sure I'll be fine. As long as you hold on to her, Kika. <laughs> yes, I offer her my arm. Yes! Yes! <laughs> the thirst increases. That little chime. Oh, she's blushing. Ooh, how cute. Yes. <laughs> She sighs softly and chides me teasingly. <laughs> really? You are too much. Mm. Get you a girl at Kika. <laughs> she then accepts. Together, we head towards the interior of the island. Margaret and I head through the wooded part of the island. There isn't anything that could be called a path, but we manage to pick our way through the bush quite well. <laughs> I am so immature. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Being why. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh. Being slow. Be mature, being <laughs> Meredith, don't use that image. <laughs> Coco, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got too worked up. Uh, nothing happened. Sign? Nothing! I wasn't being evil or bad, I swear! <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Alright, let's keep going. Through a thinner st stand. Stand? I, th I thought they would say strand, but... Eh, okay. Okay. Through a thinner stand of trees, we briefly catch sight of the guide standing on one of the beaches. He seems fine, but even though I'm sure he turned his head toward me, he makes no show of acknowledging us. Uh, if somebody wants to whip me, you can. I, I kind of deserve it for what I just did. <laughs> ah. Oh, Justin, no! Why did you clip that? No! <laughs> Uh, my, I'm, I'm ashamed. <laughs> we move on, and eventually find Bamele in a jagged clearing, leaning against a tree. OT3? Come on, why can't we have OT3? I love the way Bamele and Margaret interact. Like the bickering. I think it'd be so freaking cute. Like, if I could freaking draw, I would do it. I would draw the three of them together. No, Poker Curl, I didn't do anything wrong. I am totally innocent. Although I will accept being whipped by Coco. She is allowed. <laughs> He's already noticed us and is looking our way, smiling. As we approach, I pick up on the sadness behind his jovial expression. Aw, oh, man! Now he's sad! Because we didn't choose him. See? The perfect solution to this would be OT3. Oh, you're gonna see if Tumblr has made any OT3 art? Girl! If you see some, you let me know. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I know, harem routes... Ugh, I wish. How are you faring? Any problems? Everything is fine. We came to check on you. How kind. I've calmed down since then. Yes, Meredith, yes. I'm glad to hear that. Is there any way I can help or anything you'd like to say? He raises an eyebrow at that, still grinning. This is your chance, man! Make the OT3 happen! Say, I love you both. Be my waifus. 
a poker girl, basically it would mean that all three of them would be in a relationship together. That's what we would like, because they're all cute together. Yes! I didn't expect to see you so worried about me, Kika. I have to force myself not to avert my eyes at that comment. Embarrassment flowing into me. You ought to not question it, you know. Simply be thankful for all her thoughtfulness. He nods and chuckles heartily. Right. I feel a warmth that turns my lips up into a shy smile. Margaret nods approvingly. See? See? They're so cute! Oh my god! Bemelay glances between Margaret and I, smiling coyly over the exchange. His amusement doesn't last, however. Instead, he throws his arms out wide with a sour expression. Uh, a love triangle would be is usually for when, you know, two people love one person and they have to, and that person has to choose between them. But what we're saying is that she shouldn't have to choose. She should get both, <laughs> the best of both worlds. Have you seen the guide? Oh yeah, we saw him. That oh, douche. Bemele is clearly asking out of a sense of obligation and makes no secret that he's not pleased to be discussing the guide. I nod in response. I saw him earlier. He is the same as always. Good, good. In that case, I'm going to stretch my legs for a bit. I feel stiff from standing in one place for so long. Wait. I can't help but wonder if it's the best idea to keep splitting up and wandering off. We've all had time to ourselves to think. I believe we should stay together now. Yes, stay together. Yes. She has a point. We can't be sure how safe this island truly is. Well, I've had my fair share of being difficult lately. I can accept that if you feel so strongly about it. Mm-hmm. I'd still like to take a walk, if you two don't mind joining me. I don't think they would mind at all. <laughs> we don't have much time to contemplate the offer before he chimes in once more. I could also go for a nap. <laughs> I smile softly at his attempt to be accommodating to us, despite our sudden intrusion. Oh, this wasn't voice acted. Okay. I would not mind walking. Bemelay grins and glances over at Margaret. What do you think? Mm, I am the one who wanted us to stick together. I'm not going to put a wedge in the plan. I'll come along. Glad to hear it. Ah, I, I know what you're saying, Sign. That is a different type of love triangle for sure. That kind is actually pretty fun. <laughs> like, everybody loves somebody else. The three of us begin our walk, conversing lightly as we meander around the island. And you know the perfect solution for that kind of love triangle? Oh, T3! <laughs> as we walk, I can feel my worries easing into a light burden. I peek over at Bemele and Margaret, noticing the brightness in their eyes, the cheer in their voices, and know they feel the same. Wow! Ah, I love this! You know what's interesting? When we were with him, we didn't have this moment with her. But with her route, we're having a moment with him included, so... Hmm... Just goes to show that ladies are more willing to share. <laughs> Yes, the, the OT4 would be Dillert. <laughs> Dirt. <laughs> but, I don't know, he did try to kill us earlier. He was being too yandere for my tastes. After all the horror of the night, finally we have a reprieve. Bemele speaks an animatedly as he finishes another of his tales. So he tries to force his way into that old barn by kicking the door open. His foot ends up going right on through the wood and gets stuck. <laughs> oh, that's totally fine, pup. I totally get it. No problemo. Margaret and I exchange a look, sharing unspoken amusement. You just missed a lot of talking about OT3s and shipping and love triangles. <laughs> I'm curious. This fellow guard you've been speaking of, 
wouldn't happen to be a stand-in for yourself, would he? Oh, there they go with their bickering. <laughs> he certainly wouldn't. Must you always doubt my word? <laughs> Bemelay playfully feigns distress while Margaret laughs. They're so cute. Yes, Kika's far too polite, so someone has to keep you from getting too big-headed. Fine, fine, fair enough. Yes, snuggle the puppy, snuggle the puppy. But what if I told you the fellow guard in my story was actually Kika? <gasps> How dare you, sir! <laughs> then I'd have to tease her for committing a blunder that seems like one you would make, of course. Oh, dear. You're a harsh one, Margaret. I'm not safe from your verbal lashings, no matter what I say. You make it much too easy for me. <laughs> Margaret's grinning, full of mirth. She looks towards me. Kika, you aren't upset by that, are you? Am I upset by you two flirting? Nope. Keep on, please. I like to watch. I mean, uh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Her face grows with concern. She's probably questioning if she's taken it too far by targeting me. I smile warmly and shake my head. I'm glad to be included. Yes! Yes! Oh, day three! Margaret immediately looks relieved, returning to her jokingly snobbish expression. This familiar exchange with her has made me brave. I take a deep breath. And in all fairness, I'd also have to give myself a difficult time if I made a mistake befitting Bemelay. <laughs> I glance between Bemelay and Margaret nervously, trying to gauge their reactions to my attempt at adding to the conversation. Aw, she's so adorable. She just wants to fit in and be funny and be loved. Yes, yes, you deserve all the love. Uh, yes, I saw the 3D Keyblade model. Looks awesome. I would never know how to make any of that. <laughs> After a moment, they both start to smirk, then Bemelay lets out a hearty laugh. I can't believe I've been betrayed this way, after all we've been through. Hey, you betrayed me first. <laughs> Margaret smoothly applauds my efforts. I smile timidly at their reactions. Ah, oh, she's so, she's such a cinnamon roll. Yes, Kika. You've come so far, Kika. Aw, oh, Justin, you know we always laugh. You're so funny. Margaret gazes at me fondly. Ooh, ooh, gaze back, girl, gaze back. <laughs> and Bemelay's like, hey, what about me? <laughs> I catch Margaret's eyes, and we spend a moment sharing a gentle connection. Oh, they're so cute. I love it. For a brief, oh, I got an achievement. It says company. For a brief moment, all of the troublesome circumstances seem to float away from our minds, and we enjoy each other's company. I wish it could go on for so much longer, but it's only a while later that I have to speak up. We really should rest before nightfall. I'm fine with that idea. All right. Bemelay leads us over to the area where the guide mentioned we were going to meet. Margaret and I sit together. She lightly rests her head against my shoulder. <gasps> yes! <sighs> I wish I could see an image of that. That would be so freaking cute. Tumblr failed. No! No shipping art! No! Ah. Dang, I wish I could draw. <laughs> the three of us quietly wait for the guide's arrival, occasionally chatting with one another as we rest. Okay, this part I think we can skip. Or not? It's almost time. I nod and feel myself grow tense. We truly are about to return to those bridges. All of us wait in an uncomfortable silence until night falls. Oh, remember what happened last time? Hmm. I'm kind of concerned it's going to happen again. We silently stand as one, forming a vigil of sorts. Our remaining lanterns illuminate the dark prepared for tonight's journey. And yet, the way forward does not appear. Yep. 
The bridges haven't risen from the depths. I glance to my side. The guy doesn't look at all pleased. The corners of his mouth have a harsh bent. Harsh bend, I think that meant. As he briefly loses himself to heavy thoughts. We must go to the shore. Uh, what did you miss, Meredith? The only thing, the, the cute thing was that we were sitting and Margaret put her head on my shoulder. Uh, on Kika's shoulder. That was the only thing. And now we're in trouble because uh, the bridges are not appearing. And we're going to start getting attacked by the creatures. So that's not good. He doesn't offer an explanation for why. Instead, he goes on without us. I follow after the guide, my forehead creasing with swelling worry. Behind me, I hear Bemelay's and Margaret's unsure footsteps. The four of us press onto the shore. The dark waters lap at the edges of the sand, and as expected, the maze is still hidden beneath the surface. Oh yes, what happened last time, like I said, um, the bridges did not rise. And because they didn't rise, the creatures started coming out of the water and attacking us. And we were faced with a lot of difficult decisions. And, and, uh, and then the guide got injured because I ended up not helping him. But he, he managed to survive, but he got injured. So I'm wondering, this time... <sighs> I'm not sure if, if, that's, if we can prevent him getting injured would be great, actually. Uh, can we skip? Yeah. Uh, throw the lantern. Ooh! I don't know what I just did. Crap, crap, crap. I was worried about skipping. <laughs> uh, hold on. Let's see. Your safety is most important. Consider retreating. Okay, this is when the creatures are attacking him. Uh, I cannot do that. The Nixie recognized signs of weakness. So I think I had a choice. If I threw the lantern, I would save him. If I didn't, then he got injured. But he he survived. Um, hmm. Let me save. Ugh, I hope I made the right choice. I nod firmly to myself, set on the decision. I've seen the guide perform the move right in front of me. I know it isn't an impossible feat. Now something has to be done. I inch my way over to the most advanced group of Nixie. They drift slowly as they attempt to get behind the guide. I'm of no concern to them, at least for the time being. So these creatures are, um, I don't, I wouldn't say weak to light, but they're attracted to light, kind of. So that's how we've been able to keep them at bay. But we're running out of lanterns because we've had to use quite a few already. The guide spots me, and we make eye contact for a moment. He doesn't say anything and abruptly fixes his gaze elsewhere. It gives me the impression that he's aware of what I'm planning on doing. Wait, you found a... You found art of Kika and the guide? Ugh. Of all people. Ugh, I hate the guide. Why? <laughs> He's ignoring me because he doesn't want the Nixie to recognize a coming threat. I steady my arms and assume a strong stance. I stop for a heartbeat to take a deep breath. Then I jump forward a small way and toss my lantern towards the group of Nixie on the guide's right side. Okay, welcome back, sign. They're all caught completely off guard, uh, practically wheezing as they scatter and dive back into the depths below. None even attempt to steal the lantern. That is a great relief. Okay. Phew. Made the right choice. People like a guy who spurns affection. Okay. I'll admit that's me when it comes to Tagami. But uh, even I'm like, the guide, no. <laughs> the guide is nothing compared to Tagami. You're done for today. Hopefully tomorrow you'll finish the red part. Okay. Can't wait to see when it's done. The guide seizes this moment to swing his staff at the group of Nixie on his left. The light edging close to them, combined with the general chaos, disturbs the creatures enough to frighten them. The left group joins the right in retreat. The guide observes the waterline, making certain that they have all crawled back into the water, 
and then releases a small sigh. He walks over to retrieve my lantern off the sand where it landed, keeping his eyes fixed steadily behind him. Yeah, you're right, Coco. But he didn't even, like, he just started running, and he didn't even explain a, to us what was going on. Tentatively, I take a few steps towards him. He extends his arm forward, offering my lantern back to me. I've never gotten so close to the guy before. He hasn't allowed it. No! Stop checking him out! We are not pursuing him! <laughs> Like, his standoffish manner I can get, because who knows how many people have died while he tries to help them, but that bit... Yeah. You have a point there. Being in his presence this way feels... unclear. I don't have the words to describe what it turns inside of me. His eyes are expectant, impatient, and I waste no more time. I move to accept it, but I flinch before I can grasp it. Why? What's wrong? Huh. His face hardens. I have a feeling this moment is designed because if you want to pursue the guide, maybe? But I don't want to. <laughs> His face hardens, scrutinizing the unexpected reaction. I banish whatever expression was on my face and take hold of what's mine. It is nothing. Why did she flinch? He lets it go, though does not make any attempt to leave. I don't believe it is because he's worried about leaving me in darkness. He still suspects something is wrong. The guide watches closely as I set the lantern aflame once more. It, its light gently washes over me, and I smile at the sight. This tool I hold is one of the exceedingly few comforts one can have on Sinlos. I do not wish to part with it again. He is still here, and I begin to worry the guide intends to admonish me for what I've done. I may have let emotion show on my face again, because he starts to speak. Now from here on out, I'm not sure if we can actually skip anymore, because now that he's not injured, things are really different. Keeping a hold of your light is crucial. However, if you took no risk, your only way across could have been lost. It wasn't an empty self-sacrifice. Whoa, he's praising me. Whoa! <laughs> In your position, neither option was correct. Neither was wrong. Our enigmatic lead nods, and upon finishing up his thought, he returns to his original place. I stare flabbergasted at the guide's back. By chance, I was put in a circumstance that allowed our values to align, but never would I have expected him to acknowledge that I made an acceptable decision. I stop myself from getting further distracted. Instead, I glance down at my light and realize the glow looks different. I wince. There was a large crack wickedly curving up the back. Oh boy. That's not good. Hmm. Oops. Why did I click that? Don't do that, Banks. <laughs> I almost clicked on stop the stream on accident. No. Don't do that. Let's save again, actually. I'm thankful that it still works. Still, I fear that it will not hold out until the morning. I look forlornly at the fragile glass surrounding the simple flame. In a way, this event has forcefully reminded me of how fragile my own life is. One slip could mean the end of everything. Regardless, nothing can be done presently, and we've got enough to worry about as it is. I cannot let this consume me. We will continue to resist against this lake. After an untold period of time, the water begins to stir. There's an unusual gurgling, a sound I never thought I would be this relieved to hear. Slowly, creakily, the bridges make their nightly appearance. Okay, can I skip? Yes. Now! Okay. <laughs> uh, this is her um, telling her to throw, I think. It was a torch of flames at the creatures. After alerting Margaret, she gives her all to hurl the flame ahead of us while avoiding setting the bridge itself on fire. The monsters flee from the torch. The path is clear. We waste not one moment sprinting towards the bridges. 
Okay, are we able to skip again? Not much. I quickly straighten myself out and mull over our current situation. We start to consider how we are going to travel now that we only have two lanterns, okay? I can stay ahead in between the guide's light and yours. I will be fine there. At that, I become fraught with worry. I look over at Bemele, concern rioting through my body as I wonder how he'll fare being so far away from a light source. Well, the three of us could walk together. If there's one person close by, I can't imagine it would make much of a difference having another. Furthermore, I believe we've all taken enough risks for each other already for this to not be a problem. <laughs> I think we're close enough by now. Margaret. Oh, Smog, thank you so much for the host. I wish I had known you were streaming earlier. Well, I was busy cooking dinner, but maybe I could have stopped in for a bit. Hope you're doing all right, Smoggy Poo. Margaret, her consideration touches me. I smile gratefully at her. Bemele and I confer with our eyes before silently agreeing with one another. We nod. Okay, we'll do that then. Thank you. Other than having a bit of a crowd as opposed to an entirely straight line, our journey moves ahead as it did the night before. The silent night creeps along as we carefully move through the thick fog, making certain not to bump into one another. Wait, what? Eh, let him die? He's not as close as we are with Bagret? Bagret? Like, Margaret? <laughs> wow, Justin. Wow. We are not going to let our friend die. He's part of the OT3, okay? The only one who could die is the guide. Although we don't want him to die yet because we need to get to the other side. <laughs> then my lantern blinks. It fizzles out. Uh-oh. This is new. This didn't happen last time. That's not good. The three of us gasp simultaneously, and I hold my breath like time will stop with my breathing. Oh, To my great relief, the light flutters back on. The air I'd been anxiously holding in releases as a sigh. What's going on? That was scary. <laughs> the guide has halted, but does not bother to turn around as he asks the question. It was nothing. I watch as he shifts his head back to look at us. The stare he gives is probing and deeply unnerving. He doesn't believe me. I return his gaze, my expression blank. We remain locked in this moment. I can feel his patience with me slipping away. Seriously, dude, like, why is it such a big deal? You could have just said, oh, uh, our lantern almost went out, but it's fine now. <laughs> he chooses not to spend any longer waiting for an answer that will not come. The guide faces his back to us once more. He acts without a word, but I know he isn't satisfied. Our small group shares anxiety-ridden looks as the guide moves ahead. Oh my gosh, Justin. <laughs> I look down at my lantern. The crack seems larger than ever. Oh, the crack is what caused that to happen. Oh, shoot. From saving his sorry butt. Oh, no. I feel as though I am cracking with it. There is nothing I could do to fix it should it go out for good. We need to keep going. We shouldn't speak of this. I can feel that they're apprehensive over this situation, and undoubtedly curious as, as to how it happened in the first place. Oh, they don't know. Well, our lantern almost went out, sign, so it's not good. However, this is not the time. I don't want to draw attention to this for fear of the guide catching on. The chattering of the Nixie bubbles up out of the darkness, and I gulp harshly. The thought crosses my mind that they, too, have noticed what just transpired. We walk for quite a bit longer. The voices whispering amongst each other has died down, but the squishing and clicking of prowlers has replaced them. It's difficult to trace the exact origin of the sound. All I know is that it's far too close for comfort. The guide stops abruptly, bringing us to an awkward halt. Luckily, there are no impacts between the three of us. Stay where you are. Oh, no. 
My eyes are drawn to the guide. He's making small movements, cautiously pressing his foot into the boards in front of him at different spots. Could something be wrong with the bridge itself? My theory is proven correct almost immediately. This is new, too. The boards ahead are unstable. They may break when stepped on. Dang, Nabbit. Is there another path? This is our path. Move slowly and do not have two people on the same board at a time. I will cross first. When I find a stable section, I will inform you. Then you will follow my lead. Oh, this is bad. I'm so scared. <laughs> oh, no. When I'm coming across something new, I'm like, oh, crap. Ugh. He doesn't allow us time to answer before darting forward. His steps are light, but beneath him the wood creaks loudly. Why are the bridges this way? They can be burned into ash and will still rise the next nightfall. And yet the spot is less stable than the rest. That is strange. Yeah, it is really weird. There likely isn't a reason for it. It's just another piece of madness. <laughs> yeah. The unnatural black water has a great deal of magic within. That is the most reasonable source of the bridges. If this maze is formed without an intelligent creator, that would explain its treacherous nature. The guide breaks his cautious steps, testing the security of the bridge. Where I am now is solid. You only need to reach this position. Oh my god. We'll be right there. I face the others. To ensure that there is enough light for all of us, I will go second. We need to keep enough distance between each other to not break the boards. Oh my god. Ah, oh, I can't take it. I, I keep saving. I'm so nervous. <laughs> this game makes me super nervous. Bemily elects to lead and starts going forward, inching gingerly across the trembling boards. After there's some distance, I begin to follow, focused on keeping my movements steady. Margaret is the last to leave. Margaret, don't die, please! The three of us carefully navigate the creaking, soggy wood. We attempt to keep to the guide's path in hopes that the boards will hold. I feel my foot lay heavily on a board. It bends, hair-raisingly, under me. I wince as I slowly step off of it. I wonder if we should be crawling on all fours to spread our weight over a wider space. But that may make us vulnerable to those creatures. Oh, God. That's true! Margaret doesn't have glasses! Oh, my God! My focus is broken when I hear a shout from ahead. No! Bemele's foot has snapped through the bridge. Move to pull him back. Oh no! Oh, I should have let him die? No! I instinctively rush forward. Oh, that's one of those times where I actually should have done nothing. Oh my god. But the abrupt movement and added weight causes the board to splinter completely. We're dead. We're dead. Fudge! <laughs> I hit the cold water like a slap, smacking my head on a falling chunk of wood. I'm just so used to when those prompts come up. Like, it's almost like you have to do something. So I'm not used to like, hey, don't do anything, you know? Jeez! All I can do is try to swim back to the surface despite the thick hold of water and growing fog in my mind. Before I can reach it, I feel something latch onto my legs with a grip like an iron manacle. I struggle to kick the weight off, flailing my legs desperately as my air supply dwindles. It only tightens its grip so much I can feel my ankle bones caving in. It drags me further away from the upper world of air, light, and life. Ugh, I can feel more clawed hands grab me, and with an icy turning of my insides, I realize that it's already too late for me. Wow, this is actually going on longer than the last time I died. Which I'm surprised so far this is only my second time dying playing this game. <laughs> Despite this, I struggle and thrash about as much as my burning lungs will let me, so that if he fell into the water too, I can at least keep the monsters busy with me. Oh, that's right! Because Bemele might have fallen too. Oh, shoot. This last sense of purpose keeps me fixated, even as my senses get fuzzy. Aww. She was even thinking about trying to protect him. 
I'm dragged lower and lower with a vague smile on my face until the darkness completely overtakes me. Lake of Voices. Alright. Thank goodness I kept saving. <laughs> to ensure that there is enough light for all of us, I will go second. We need to keep... Okay. Well, now I know I have to actually not do anything. Jeez. Okay. This is stressful. We're sacrificing someone? No. I would never. <laughs> well, I don't know. Maybe he's able to recover. I can't save him. Ugh. Despite every cell in me screaming to help, I force myself not to make any sudden movements. God, I didn't even think of that. Ugh, that's hard. Bemele lifts his foot up from the cusp of the water and places it back on the board in front of him. Thank God he's alive. Whew. Thank goodness. The entire section could have collapsed. <laughs> Meredith, no! <laughs> I mean, a minute ago, I pretty much just killed both of us. <laughs> Margaret looks at us, clearly concerned. A part of the board broke. Everyone is fine, however. You should avoid that section completely. Yep. All right. We're still in much danger as we stand here. I encourage him to begin moving once more. God, this is scary. Uh, let's save because we made it past that part. <laughs> Watch something else happen, though. <laughs> I make sure to skip over the broken board myself when I come to it. As I pass by the hole, I catch a bit of movement in the water. But when I look closely, there's nothing there. Oh my god, Justin, do not jinx him! After a few more agonizing minutes, everyone reaches the other side of that trap. Each of us three mutter various expressions of relief. There isn't a word from our guide. Oh, no, that's fine, Smooth. Good luck with your homework, man. We continue our journey across the bridges, sharing small, sporadic bits of conversation, until we're plunged into darkness. I immediately come to a screeching halt that almost makes the two near me lose their footing. I look down at my lantern. It's as dark as the water. Oh no! The three of us stare at it, silently pleading. A few moments pass, and yet the lantern remains cold and lifeless. In desperation, I jiggle the lantern, hoping that somehow something will click and the light will return. Nothing happens. I feel the other's nerves climbing with every second. They shift uncomfortably as they watch me pathetically attempt to relight it. We are quiet, still hoping that the guide won't notice. I see shaking and tapping at the sides of the cracked glass. When that doesn't yield any results, I open the lantern itself and look over the internal workings. I cannot reach inside. Despite its appearance, the metal has retained the heat from before, and I would be burned. Oh no. As the darkness stretches on, I frantically try to figure out what the problem is from sight alone to no avail. Your light is gone. Oh boy. The indifferent tone of the speaker is unmistakable. No. Not yet. Is he gonna abandon us? I look up from my work to see that the guide is approaching us. I'm at a loss for words. He comes near, and the edges of his light shelter us like a blanket. Relight it. My hands begin to tremble. I know that it won't do anything, but I do as demanded and hope for a miracle. I attempt to get the inner core to catch flame, but the lantern refuses to comply, no matter what I do. Uh, yes, it's just the four of us. It would have been five if we could have saved this other guy, but unfortunately we couldn't. The guide's eyes widen as the full scope of the situation dawns on him. My two companions start nervously fidgeting and whisper about possible solutions, but I hear each one getting shot down. What are we going to do now? Margaret's voice comes out shaky. I look at the guide forlornly. We're completely at his mercy now, if he has any to spare at all. I saved your butt, man. You better be nice to me for once. He coldly surveys the three of us. After silently deliberating, 
He narrows his eyes until they're slits in his face. I will allow one of you to remain in my light. <gasps> oh, shoot. Who's it gonna be? You know who I would choose, right? Only because she can't protect herself and because she's our bae. <laughs> uh, one. That's insanity! Your staff creates more than enough light for the four of us. We could easily follow at a distance you would feel comfortable with. Someone who wants to live will share their light with no one. I will not share my light with three. Oh my god. Oh my god, Smooth, where'd you get that from? That's awesome. Monokuma! <laughs> Despair! <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I love that. He almost snarls at us. After everything that's happened, all that we've done, you're going to abandon two of us this easily? You truly are a bastard. Well, it's the guide. What do you expect? Oh my god, Justin, no! <laughs> and then Coco has Nagi. <laughs> Stop. If you take so much as one wrong step towards him, all the guide will do is flee. There is no chance that fighting will end in more people surviving. Oh my god. Vemelay doesn't say any more, but grits his teeth. Margaret is completely frozen, her mind racing to process everything. Then, what about two? Could you please keep two of us safe? At least keep us trying to negotiate. Ugh. The guide sharply shakes his head. I will allow one and no more. Two will be left behind. Oh, you're so evil. Finality rings out from his words. Lingering at a distance far behind my light will leave you vulnerable. The wisest option is to continuously move, even if it means going another way. Oh my god. This is horrible! Lemele glowers at the guide hatefully. Beside me, Margaret begins to whisper something to herself. I can't make out what it is. A torrent of thoughts rip through my mind as I try to find some other way. Kika. My body stiffens. The guide has never referred to me by name this way. It is jarring enough to gain my attention, even amidst the panic rising. You are the most likely to survive. The offer is for you. Oh my god! No! No! Margaret! You have to take Margaret! just got my dog upset. <laughs> Fudge! No! Come on! Oh. Is it because I saved him so he's grateful? And that's why he wants to save me? Jesus. My eyes widen even further. No. I don't want that. I can't be the only one who... No. No. I turn my eyes to my two companions, but both of them gaze back at me, dejected. <sighs> there is horrifying resignation in their eyes. Huddle up, better remove some articles of clothing. <laughs> I know, right? I'm sure uh, Dillert would like that, and then he'll be like, Okay, we're not gonna kill you guys. Oh, Kiba, I'm sorry I yelled. I'm sorry. <laughs> my dog's like, what's going on? Oh gosh, this is horrible. This cannot be happening. They should be going, not me. They should be the ones who remain safe. I'm nowhere near as sharp as you are. We both always knew that. I know, right? Gang up on the guide and take his light. <laughs> There's a fragile, self-deprecating smile on his face. It makes my heart ache. My lantern broke because I foolishly dropped it. And I've already lost my glasses, so... Oh no! I shake my head, refusing to watch them give up so easily. I turn to the guide's face one last time, begging him mentally. He is empty and unflinching. It needs to be done. This is what it means to cross Sinlos. No! <laughs> I can't lose the one I want to be in love with! No! Ooh. Interesting image. 
Oh, that looks so scary. Those are all the creature's eyes. The heavy words sink into me as I stare towards the void that eagerly awaits two of us. Oh my god. I won't go. Let someone else stay. The guide sucks in a breath, clearly disappointed. Being without light is dangerous, even if you are close to another. The one who goes with me has no guarantee of making it across. You risk this entire journey being for naught. The correct decisions need to be made. Everyone should be aware of that. Take Margaret. His words cut deep. I have no logical reason to object to going if my only solution is choosing another for the same position. I thought I would be ready for when this for this when it presented itself. I believed I had the strength. That was only what I wanted to believe. So that's interesting. If I'm on the guide's romantic route, does that mean that I would choose to go with him and the other two would just be left and die? Holy crap, that's horrible. Noting that I haven't said anything despite plenty of opportunity, the guide continues. I will not choose someone else and neither will they. Can you do so? Who deserves to be saved and who lost in your mind? Oh, this is horrible. I don't know. Would the right choice be that I keep uh, Margaret with me so that I can protect her? Or do I send her with the guide and she'll be safe? Oh my god, I don't know. Oh, this is horrible. What am I supposed to do? I supposed to do? I don't know. Justin is all evil. A pit forms in my stomach as the responsibility of this unspeakable choice falls on my shoulders. Stop this! It isn't helping! I'm not the one who can stop it now. <gasps> oh! Uh, well, hello! I didn't know I could do that. <laughs> I just realized I was recording the stream. What the frick? Oops. Well, I will have to delete that later. It's being recorded by Twitch anyway. <laughs> anyway, I tried to form a coherent sentence, but whenever I tried to wrench them out, the words vanished from my tongue. Having lost his patience, the guide points a finger at Margaret almost accusingly. I've noticed the attention you've given her. Is that what this is about? Do you want to sacrifice your position to give her a hope of safety? Holy crap, he's calling me out for being in love with Margaret? Oh my god! <laughs> yes, I want to save my boo, okay? So sue me. Sue me my sin, Nagy Kun. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Or perhaps you would prefer the both of you being left so you remain together? Or does your relationship not matter after all and you don't care who gets the chance as long as you avoid a sense of guilt? Oh my god, he actually just said the options I was wondering. <laughs> You're completely mad! Kika's reaction is what any normal human being would have. You can't pretend she's to blame! I am aware. No one should have to take on such a grim task. That was why I did not ask it of you. I did it myself. However, that wasn't agreeable. So now the choice is hers, and it is time to decide. Oh my god, this is... this is brutal! Ah! Adios mio, I can't! <laughs> I look over at Margaret and Bemele, hot tears flowing from my eyes. Take Margaret! Mm. Oh, because at least with... Oh, God, I hope that's the right choice. Oh, I'm so stressed out. I don't know if I was supposed to keep her with me. Oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> the guide regards me with an unreadable expression. Without another word, he turns around and begins to walk down the bridge. Startled by the action, I take a step towards him. 
He turns just slightly to speak over his shoulder. If any further discussion is needed, then you will have to do it amongst yourselves. The guide pauses for a moment. If you wish, you may follow. No one else is to do so. He stares straight into Margaret's face, referring to her without saying so directly. I stand frozen in place, shocked as the guide gets further away. It sinks in that the guide is actually leaving. He won't be coming back. I whip towards Margaret. You have to go. Go, my love, go! Why would you do that? Because I chose you! She peers at me, vexed. Because it felt right. Margaret's eyes fill with tears, and she scrunches her nose up. Well, you're wrong. I hope you realize. I shake my head. The decision has been made. You need to go. We will find our own way. Margaret wipes the tears from her eyes. She fixates on me penetrating penetratingly, and I know that she doesn't truly believe me. I mirror her look with equal gravity. He's safe. Please. There isn't time left. Ugh. This hurts my heart. Renewed tears pour down Margaret's face, dripping in a subtle rhythm onto the already damp wood. She opens her mouth and begins to say something. However, it catches in her throat. She doesn't want to say goodbye. I don't either. She looks down and her voice drops to a whisper. Thank you both for everything. Please don't die. Don't die! She then turns around, trying to catch up with the guide. It was almost unbearable seeing her so hurt. She didn't want to sacrifice someone else for her own safety as much as I didn't. However, I still hold to, hold to my decision. My only regret is that it wasn't only myself who was left in the dark. We both stand alone, consumed by a creeping darkness. Well, we can get through this. We're warriors. Come on, man. OT3? Please don't die. Don't die because I kept you with me. Ugh, I'm so worried. I gulp in a breath and exhale it slowly. My eyes are drawn back over to Bemele. So this is interesting. On his route, we had everybody survive, you know? But why is it that Margaret's route, it's like... People are gonna maybe die. What the frick? You're punishing me for loving her. It is difficult to face him after the choice I made. Yet I'm determined to accept my own decision and do whatever I can in order to still assure his safety. He doesn't look at me at all. He's mad. Excuse me. And instead watches the path the others disappeared down. He seems almost introspective. There's a pocket of silence between us, before he speaks. I'm glad we were able to help someone this time. Though, I wasn't of much use. Aw, oh, you're, you're a sweet man. You're still Baymalay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Baymalay takes my silence as an invitation to continue. I can't tell if this will work out for the best once everything is said and done but we don't have the luxury of pondering over all those possibilities right now. He finally turns to face me. His lips curl into a slight smile. We need to hurry if we're going to beat the two of them to the other side. Run! Run! I match his smile and gratefully nod. Bemele is a good man. I can't help but be in awe of how understanding he was of what I did. I put not only both our lives on the line, but this also risks no one arriving to help our cause. Oh yeah, that's true. As the guide said, everything could be for naught because of me. Still, his brightness doesn't fade even in this cold void. And what Bemele said is right. I shouldn't get caught up in my own thoughts right now. It isn't over. The two of us dash forward and take another branching path out of the bridges. We continue to race across Sinlos, Bridge after bridge. Many glossy arms reach up from the lake over the sides of the bridge towards our ankles. Luckily, we're able to pass by each one before any can grab a hold. 
Bemele keeps pace right alongside me as we run with determination. Oh god! Our confidence is shattered as we turn down another path and are forced to come to a halt. In the distance, we see it, a mass of slow-moving figures creeping our way. I narrow my eyes. Prowlers. I turn behind me, only to see more Nixie as they begin to rise up from the waters. They stretch their crooked limbs across the boards. Droplets of cold sweat begin to run down my back. There is no clear path any longer. Even if we light a match to set a side of the bridge on fire, it's possible that not all of them will leave, and then we'd be trapped by both flames and monsters. It would also put the others at risk if the flames spread to them. I slowly slide my hand down my side and reach for the hilt of my sword. I leave behind the broken lantern that won't do anything for us now. Bemele notices me grasping my weapon and chuckles lightly. He moves to unsheath his sword as well and looks at me with agreement. I thought that our swords don't do anything. Looks like we'll be pushing our way through this time. We take an offensive stance as we've both done countless times in the past and I wordlessly signal to Bemele, focusing on the group of Nixie bobbing in the water. The two of us face our formidable foes together. I lean towards Bemele slightly and whisper to him. You strike from the right side. I'll aim for the left. Once you have a chance, run. Oh, jeez. He doesn't reply, instead tightening his expression and focusing on the battle at hand. The Nixies slither closer to us, and I hear a few of their throats rumble with the beginnings of a hiss. I order Bemele with my hand once more. We charge forward with our feet crashing against the wet boards of the bridge. As we draw nearer to the monsters, we ready our attack. I slash the first creature I meet as soon as I'm within sword's reach. The blade cuts clean, deep into the Nixie, and it screeches loudly. I dart back to put some distance between me and the remaining creatures, but I feel a force like an iron chain lock onto my leg mid-stride. Oh no! I turn with a deep dread forming in my stomach to see a Nixie latched onto my leg. I quickly slash at it, however it manages to grasp the sword with its other arm-like appendage. I kick at the creature, but the weight of my boot does nothing to ease its hold. Oh my god. Every time I forcibly make contact, its flesh folds over and squishes down in such an incredibly unnatural way. It's as though their flesh has no attachment to its bones. Ultimately, my thrashing is in vain. More Nixie latch onto my legs. Kinka! No! I hear Bemele's worried voice cry out nearby. It may have been concerned for my sake. However, he doesn't sound like he's faring much better. I force myself to accept that clinging to a sword here is only causing me more problems, so I release my attachment to it as I twist my body and kick. The Nixie harshly pull at my other leg as I start to kick. I'm forced off balance and topple forward. Once on the ground, the monsters start to yank at me with renewed fervor. No matter how I resist, I'm pinned completely down to the wood. Then I start being taken towards the edge. Oh my god. This is really intense. Uh, saving seven. Okay. There's a loud thud. With a sickening feeling, I realize the Nixie have pulled Bemele down as well. Oh, shoot. No! I'm not even able to turn my head to look once more before I get violently thrown into the water. Shoot! Well, we're dead. A multitude of twisted beings surround me and pull me into the depths below. How are we supposed to get past this, then? All my thoughts are occupied with hopes that somehow, Bemele was able to escape without me. No! Achievement unlocked. Guard. How am I supposed to get past this section? Hmm... Am I supposed to send Bemele with him and keep Margaret with me? Hmm. Maybe I'm not supposed to save the guide? Uh... Let me see. Maybe I am supposed to keep Margaret with me. Let's see. I am aware. 
No one should have to. Okay. Take Bemele. Hmm. Okay. The guide regards me with an unreadable expression. If we are uh, stuck again at the end of this, I'm going to end the stream here, but we'll see. Justin, please. <laughs> Dillard was very forward, wasn't he? And his friends are apparently uh, into Yaoi because they were all over Bimbele. <laughs> if you save him, then don't take his offer. That's it. Hard to imagine a way around it. Without another word, he turns around and begins to walk down the bridge. Because if I had gone with him, I think that would have been for his route. I don't think for her sake, for my route with Margaret, that it would make sense if I went with him. Okay, what's new? Uh, might be a different end where you don't choose. He turns just slightly to speak over his shoulder. If any further discussion. Okay, we saw this. If you wish, you. Dumbly. It sinks in. So the guide is actually leaving. He won't be coming back. I whip towards Bemele. You have to go. Bemele gapes at me furiously. If the choice was between the two of us, you should have gone. The people need you more than they need me, Bemele. That's a lie. Even if it worked, I wouldn't care. I don't intend on leaping into the lake. I will find a way to manage. I'm sharp and quick-witted, after all. A weakly grin. Bemele grimaces at the way I turn his own words against him. He's safe, please. There isn't time left. Bemele covers his eyes with his hand. Damn you. Aw. His face softens. I will see you again. Somehow. He lingers for only the briefest of moments before turning on his heel to catch up with the man who is no longer my guide. It was almost unbearable seeing him so hurt. He wanted to protect me as much as I wanted that for him. However, I still hold to my decision. My only regret is that it wasn't only myself who was left in the dark. We both stand alone, consumed by a creeping darkness. I gulp in a breath and exhale it slowly. My eyes are drawn back over to Margaret. It is difficult to face her after the choice I made. Yet I am determined to accept my own decision and do whatever I can in order to still assure her safety. Please, God, let this be the right choice. Ugh. Margaret stares at me wordlessly with intensity. I feel compelled to look away from her again. I refuse to give in to that temptation. Neither of us say anything as we watch the other. Margaret's narrowed eyes never waver as she peers into mine. What could she be thinking of? I can only guess. After a moment longer, Margaret sighs and breaks the staring war by looking downwards. We can't be that far from the shore by now. We may as well try to make it there, right? I hope I didn't just ruin our chances at love. <laughs> oh, God. Right. But... My sentence trails off as I drown in my regrets. Margaret shakes her head lightly. Let's not talk about it. If I were in your place before, it's not as if I would have been able to make a better choice. She pauses for a moment to furrow her eyebrows. And it is my own foolish fault that I ended up in this situation in the first place. Blaming you for any of it would be the act of a child. It is painful to hear her speak in such a way. I don't deserve this much understanding, not after what I did. Still, she has a point. I shouldn't get caught up in my desire to apologize. This isn't over yet. The two of us dash forward and take- Oh no. This is the same. Please no. Margaret teeters a little behind me and puts in her all to keep up the pace, despite the fact that it's clear she doesn't have very much experience with this kind of thing. No. No, don't let us die. Fires. Are we gonna die? No. Crap. Oh no. Wait. Hello? 
Uh, I'll wait. Okay. Maybe I'm doing the right thing. She said wait. I keep a firm hold on the hilt of my sword. However, I make no moves to draw it. It isn't safe to get near those things without a light. And besides, I have an idea. Oh! Yes! <laughs> Sorry, I got all worked up. Yes! We were supposed to take Margaret with us! Because she's smart! Yes! You are my bae! You are my waifu! Thank you! Gosh darn it! Yes, I'm so happy! Yes! No more death! Woo! You go, girl! Tell me you're a brilliant idea! Tell me! I steal a glance at Margaret, between keeping an eye on the groups of monsters surrounding us. She delves a hand into her pocket and retrieves a small book. She opens it up and tears out a page of the thick paper. She pockets the rest of the book and crumples the paper into a ball. Yes! You can use that! You can light the paper on fire! Ah! Oh, such a bay! Yes! Bagret! Like, bay Margaret, yes. Okay, I'm very happy. She's my bay. <laughs> Margaret looks up at the creatures herself to make sure that they haven't drawn too near eyeing them intensely. She pulls something out of her pocket, and with a start, I realize that it's a match. Surely she won't... Matt, Margaret catches on to my worried expression and shakes her head. I'm not going to throw this onto the bridges, if that's what you're thinking. She focuses back to her supplies and ignites the match. She lights the paper ball on fire and tosses it off the side of the bridge directly into the water. The incoming light scares off some of the Nixie, who scatter back into the depths. Oh my god, you're such a sexy woman! Yes! I love a woman with brains! Yes! Thank you! Amazingly, the light isn't immediately extinguished. It continues to burn atop the surface. The water is too dense to be disturbed by the slight weight of paper. <laughs> you clipped that. <laughs> I crack a large smile at the sight. That's excellent. You are truly clever. Mm, she's such a bay. Oh my lord. Margaret flashes me a grin of her own. I would certainly hope so, considering how much credit I've rewarded myself for my supposed intelligence. <laughs> she creates a few more paper torches and starts walking forward, tossing them on the lake in all directions. I follow along behind her watching as the remaining Nixie retreat further away from the multiplying lights dancing on the water. As soon as the area is thoroughly cleared of danger, the two of us march on ahead. Ooh, that looks creepy. The sloshing sound of water captures our attention. I look back. There's motion from under the surface, enough to begin displacing water. The lights start to go out from the splashing, if not becoming completely swallowed by the lake. Margaret and I share a glance with one another before mutually deciding not to linger. We start rushing across the bridges with renewed vigor and don't stop until the wet sounds of the crooked monsters are long behind us. I take advantage of the break to look around with more care. It is nothing but the essence of Sinlos, bridges, fog, and the lake itself. I can see neither the interloping guide's light nor the shore. Aw, your cat wants your attention. I totally understand that. My doggie does that to me all the time. We are completely and utterly lost in this labyrinth of ever-changing bridges. The atmosphere surrounding this place is even more oppressive and dense in the dark. Now that I've been forced to take in our situation, I'm engulfed by the sheer emptiness of it all. The silence is deafening. It then dawns on me what that means, and I wildly turn my head left to right to scan the area. Actually, let me save now that we made it past that dangerous area. Uh, let's save here. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, Meredith is not in our Discord, actually. I've been wanting to invite you to my Discord, Meredith, for a while. Are we even friends on Discord? I don't even remember. 
ค่ะไม่ได้ส่งเงินให้คุณเลยนะคะไม่ได้ส่งเงินให้คุณเลยนะคะไม่ได้ส่งเงินให้คุณเลยนะคะไม่ได้ส่งเงินให้คุณเลยนะคะ
The guide likely would have said that it agitated the Nixie too much, or could set the bridges on fire accidentally and was too risky to attempt. Margaret smirks slightly and snorts at my meager attempt to voice the guide's thoughts. <laughs> yes, keep ignoring him, Meredith. Puppy is a cute patoot. <laughs> that is exactly what he would have said. I nod while entranced by my own thoughts. If anyone should be feeling regret right now, it would be me. The reason my lantern broke was because I had thrown it to assist the guide when we were on the island. It was impossible not to have noticed your little act of heroism. I had been wondering if that was it. I'm sorry. Please don't apologize. Unfortunately, we can't just leave the guide to fend for himself like he does for us. You had to be sure he remained to lead the group. It's your tendency for decision-making that is probably why he wanted you to stay. Tch. Pangs of pain sting in my chest. No matter how much I try to ignore it, I feel terrible about making Margaret remain behind in this bleak, spiraling maze while I chose someone else to accompany the guide. Well, we tried the other way, okay? But frickin' Bemele, I brought it with me and we both died, okay? <laughs> we needed Margaret to save us. I dip my head down in a hot flush of shame. You couldn't force the guide to take the both of us. You tried. Tears form in the corners of my eyes at her gentle words. You're far too kind, Margaret. No matter the situation, I still made a decision. And it wasn't to ensure your safety. Aww. She scoffs. I mentioned you never forced me to come onto those bridges, didn't I? And we can't get distracted over being upset at all this. The both of us should accept what we've done and move on. I weakly nod at her initially, though as I give her words some thought, I nod again with confidence. I can make amends after I've gotten her safely to the other shore. Oh yeah, you will make it up to her alright. Massage her feet, run her a bubble bath, massage her shoulders, give her hugs and kisses, <laughs> spoil her. I resolve to not let it bog my mind down again for the course of this journey. Margaret seems satisfied with my response, and so the two of us drop the subject and continue forward. Breakfast in bed, yes! There is still not even a trace of a prowler on the bridges, nor any Nixie in the water. The water actually almost looks normal right there. <laughs> Both Margaret and I silently agree to speed up a bit. I don't know how much ground we have left to cover, however time is not a commodity we have to spare. We keep at this brisker pace for quite a while, however eventually we have to stop for a breather again. A very light but noticeable stirring becomes audible in the lake. I hope dearly that it's only the wind. There is an inkling of fear inside me that it isn't. Okay, let's save again. I'm worried. We cut our rest short and continue forward at an even quicker pace. After a while longer of pushing ahead, the faint silhouette of land appears on the horizon. It's almost over! I nearly can't believe what I'm seeing. Please let us survive! I attempt to steady my rising heart rate. Getting close enough to land to, only, to see it only requires going towards it for long enough. Oh, he posted the picture of him and the doggy. Oh, I gotta see that later. But the true test is finding the bridge that will actually run aground. Still, we have an honest-to-goodness fighting chance. We start running, our footsteps in sync. We cross a long path and come across a strange sight. It's a bridge which curves in and becomes more narrow in the middle than usual. Uh-oh. Eyeing the dubious bridge warily, I grow nervous at the idea of getting that close to the edge. Yet, we've never seen anything like this before. Could this possibly mean that this bridge is important? I remember we had to cross that um, in the last playthrough, when he had to carry the stupid guide. <laughs> uh, let's save again. I have a feeling this is important. Then I hear it, the whispers of the Nixie. There's no mistaking it now. We've been found by them. Margaret surveys the area, looking at the bridge and then to the lake. Her features are marred with concern. 
However, she manages to keep a brave face on. We should keep going this way. There aren't any other branches here, and backtracking won't help us get to the shore. There's a bit of a limit on how much time we have to reach it. I nod in agreement. At this point, going forward is our only option. Could we possibly use burning paper to distract the Nixie again? It could keep those monsters away for long enough to cross this part. We could run after that. Did she run out of paper? Margaret doesn't reply immediately. She seems unsure of the idea. I realize it may not be possible to balance on the bridge while lighting and tossing paper torches all around. Oh. Will you give me the supplies for it if there are any left? I'd like to make some. Okay. Margaret dons a lopsided grin. She reads me as well as I do her. You are very sharp, Kika. And very kind. I'll crumple the paper ahead of time and hand them to you as we go. Then, you can light and throw. Yeah, plus Margaret has bad eyesight right now, so it makes sense. I gesture in agreement. The compromise is solid. Neither of us should be at too much risk if the job is shared between both her and myself. Margaret begins the monotonous job of tearing the pages out of the book and forming them into balls while I keep watch for any sign of danger. Once we have a fair amount of pieces to work with, I take out my own set of matches. I ignite one by striking it on my rough leather belt, and Margaret hands me a piece of paper. I light the paper ball and toss it onto the abyssal lake. The light is jostled by a lone wave that definitely could not have been caused by the wind. The two of us begin to cross the bridge and forcibly steadied legs. Okay, let's save again. I think we're close to... Reaction time. I hope I choose the right thing. I don't know. I light up makeshift tu t touches, torches, one after the other, tossing it wherever another flickers out. The water around us churns like a mill pond. However, nothing within the lake has surfaced thus far. I toss another fireball onto the water, but something beneath it jerks violently and precisely enough to form a wave that engulfs the flame, leaving the water dark. Uh oh. Margaret gasps, hastily shave, shoves another piece of paper towards me. I swiftly light it and throw it out. The water is still for only a moment before the fire is put out again by the splash of an unseen hand. Uh-oh. Oh no, Louisa! No! We freeze. I look at Margaret from the corner of my eye and whisper to her. Both Margaret and I are still in the middle of the narrow bridge, only inches away from the edge. Give me all the paper you have left. I will throw it back the way we came. We need to get these creatures away from us. Margaret nods shakily and dumps the remaining papers into my hands. She empties more from her pockets and places those in my arms as well. At least we didn't skimp on the amount made. I set them aflame as fast as possible, lighting two at a time and launching them at the edge of the water before the fire can consume the paper. A chorus of hisses erupt from the Nixie underwater as a flurry of flames come towards them. A torrent of splashes echoes from beyond the bridges as they grow increasingly agitated at the foreign objects in their lake. Uh, I'm not dropping frames, so it's not on my end. I keep a few pieces of paper in my hands and whip towards Margaret. Start moving, quickly! Margaret nods, slightly baffled. The two of us start to sprint down the narrow bridge while the Nixies swim around, distracted by the flames. Once the previous batch of lights have burned out, I ignite the rest of the papers in my hands and toss the collection of flames into the lake. That is the last distraction we'll get. We force our feet to go even faster as the sounds of sloshing water and unearthly murmuring grow closer to our heels. I gasp loudly as the bridge below us suddenly lurches to the side. The two of us brace against each other to steady ourselves as the bridge slowly tilts back into place. Oh shoot. We gulp as we eye each other. This was not something we had prepared for. The bridge can't hold weight properly. If we step out of line, it could break. Yet we aren't afforded even a moment's reprieve as the sounds of the Nixie break through the haze of racing thoughts. I'm going to save again. Oh, shoot. We advance down the bridge, this time more aware of how we place our footing. Our quick pace means some mistakes are inevitable. The bridge starts to tilt again, and eager eyes look up at us from right below the waterline. 
It bends towards the waiting hands of Nixie, and I pull Margaret back while leaning my weight to the opposite side. In a small miracle, the bridge is able to even back out. I release the breath I had been holding. Before the monsters can make a move on us, we push ahead. Finally, the boards start to widen out again. Margaret relaxes her shoulders as they stop needing to brush against mine. My heart pounds from the adrenaline that fought against the need to move slowly and carefully, despite the insane danger. The chorus of whispers increases as we get out of easy reach. Uh-oh. Daylight's coming. The view of the shore draws steadily closer as we go down the path ahead. As it does, the light of the sun starts to barely peek over through the heavy fog. Margaret says something. It's too quiet for me to hear what it was, and I don't have the breath to ask her to elaborate. I'm running incredibly low on energy by this point, and I can tell from the way that Margaret is panting she too is very tired. And then, a dull thud vibrates through the boards. Frick. Margaret? No. Oh no. What's gonna happen? I slide to a stop on the slick bridge and turn to face behind me. Margaret is on the ground. I don't waste even one more moment before going to her side. Are you alright? Can you stand? We have to move. No, I can't keep running anymore, Kika. It's too much. There's nothing out there. There's never been anything out there. You can go by yourself. Margaret, no! Now is not the time for this, honey. Margaret. My heart sinks at her words. Suddenly, our urgent situation seems much less important. Uh, what? <laughs> I crouch down to be at her level. Girl, I like you, but I'm gonna slap you. Slap some sense into you be like, come on, girl, let's go. We'll kiss and make up later. <laughs> she bites back tears and tries to push me away. I know you understand better than most that you can't force someone to do something. I can't do that here. But I can ask if you truly want this. I rest my hand firmly on her shoulder. Margaret, you can make it. We can make it. Even if we don't know what's at the end of this path. We can see it with our own eyes. Margaret looks up at me through the tears. She's scared, but there's no longer a look of resignation. Still trembling, she starts to rise. I stand with her, a reserved smile forming. Once on her feet, Margaret takes some deep breaths, trying to calm the panic inside her. She looks at me fiercely and nods. She's going to come. Tears of my own start to fall. We start to run again, and this time we do not stop. We cannot stop. The ever slow, slowly moving sunrise is our final chance to make it through this nightmare. My fists are curled tightly as we run, our, leg our lungs burning from the sharp, humid air. We keep pushing and pushing, with nothing but a stubborn refusal to accept this as the end carrying our feet. Until eventually, we make it. Yes! Happy ending! Woo! <laughs> we got it. We practically burst onto shore, rushing onto the solid ground and nearly collapsing. We both manage to distance ourselves from the waterline a decent amount before we earnestly crumble to the ground and try to steady our erratic breathing. Tears form in my eyes and flood onto my cheeks. We made it. Against all odds, we finally made it to the other side in one piece. I look towards Margaret fondly. It fills me with joy that we are both are here, just as I believed we could be. She is smiling. A noise beside us brings me out of the moment. I frantically turn to see where it came from. The disturbance is enough to immediately shoot the tension back up. It's an immense surprise and thrill when Bemele emerges into view. Everybody lives. Yay! <laughs> he stands a little ways away, almost gawking at what could potentially be a pair of ghosts in front of him. Oh, T3! His momentary shock dissipates, and a relieved smile easily replaces it. He murmurs quietly. You're alive. Yes, now kiss us. Kiss us! <laughs> My frayed nerves settle again. He made it to the other side. A reunion is intentionally interrupted by the final member of our group. The guide, who seemingly materialized out of nowhere, doesn't have a mind to let us get caught up in emotions on the shore of this lake. What a jerk. It is time to leave this place. There is nothing left for you here. Good. 
Upon being addressed by him, I rise to my feet. <clears throat> Excuse me. He has a calm look on his face, though there is force behind his serenity. I open my mouth in an attempt to speak. However, I quickly realize I have little idea of what to say. He left us behind, but it did indeed lead to success. Must I admit that forsaking others is correct? Or was that not truly the only way? Yes, whip the guide! <laughs> and then the fog is removed from my thoughts. After everything that has happened, it becomes clear. I harden my face to match his serious disposition. There is something he is certainly right of. This lake isn't a place to linger. Going round and round in circles will never help. We cannot submit our lives or our minds to Sinlos. What I must do if I truly want to defend others is keep them from coming here at all. When I return to my village, I intend to make that information acutely known to our elder. For that to happen, we must leave. Goodbye. More like, F you, dude. <laughs> Sticks up the middle finger. His eyes narrow as he looks over me. I begin to feel uncomfortable under his scrutiny, but for a moment I could swear I noticed him smiling slightly. I know he wants some of this Kika magic, but you ain't getting any. At least not right now. <laughs> Maybe someday I'll play your route, okay? I don't like you, but we'll see. Maybe you'll redeem yourself, who knows. However, it could easily be a trick of the morning sun. <laughs> Whips the internet. <laughs> Bemele merely scoffs. It's perhaps for the best that Bemele's refusing to acknowledge him rather than getting deciding to get caustic. At this point, nothing can be done about that man. Margaret steps over to us and re regards the guide with a pointed expression. This will be goodbye for us as well. I appreciate the opportunity you've graced me with. However, I won't be returning here. Yeah, you don't need to be a guide, honey. Leave that to him. The guide offers no reaction to her statement. In fact, he says nothing at all. Instead, he simply turns on his heel and leaves us alone once more. We make no attempt to stop him, watching him silently as he disappears into the landscape. It is painfully clear that no matter how meaningful this is for us, it is only another day in his life. Once the guide fully departs, Margaret frowns harshly. This all seems so terribly sad. I regard the lake again. It is isolated and desolate, the mist still covering the surface like a suffocating rag. Kika? Kika! I'm right here. Margaret's worried voice beckons me back to the present. I turn my wistful face to determined as I realize that there's still much to accomplish ahead of me. We can't stay here any longer. I signal Bemele to start moving out. With my legs strengthening with each step, I move away from the lake. Margaret notices and follows behind with no hesitation. I offer her a small smile, set, seeing her settle in step with me. We turn our backs to the shore and advance towards the forest. There's a great cauldron full of turmoil between us. Grief, regret, and uncertainty all loom over our heads, even as we leave the lake behind. But swirling among them is relief and gratitude, transforming into new hope for the future, the gift at the bottom of that dark pit we had found ourselves in. I know not what I'm going to do with these emotions nor myself, however I do know what I must do in this moment, move forward. Without looking back or stopping, I close my eyes and whisper beneath my breath, soft as a falling leaf. To all those left behind within this lake of Sinlos, I offer one last reverent parting word. Farewell. Okay, I think we saw this. You went to do your job. Grateful. She worked tirelessly to aid the guards. She would remember the lake. Okay, Bemele was of great help during the fight. His outwardly positive demeanor lifted the spirits of many around him, but I could see from the shadows in his eyes that he hadn't forgotten what we went through. Rather than be paralyzed by it, he is pushing himself to be even stronger. I admire that about him, and I fully intend to support him the way he does for me. As a friend. <laughs> After putting Sinlos behind her, Margaret explained where she was originally from, though she has no plans in returning. Despite leaving everything she knew, Margaret boldly looks towards the future. I respect her for her bravery, and I hope for nothing more than the best. 
I was finally able to learn the name of the stranger we met on the bridges, Lou. As the guide predicted, he did not survive. He had requested to cross and been denied. He must have been truly desperate to attempt crossing alone. Yeah, we'll see his storyline someday too. <laughs> I can only pray that those who cared for him will learn the truth of what happened. I have not heard nor seen the guide since then. He will remain obscured in that realm of fog and fear, a mysterious light off in the distance that is ever out of reach of the real world. As the task in Hammer comes to a close, I mentally prepare myself to return home. I'm all too aware that things can never be as they were. What I know for certain is that my village elder must be told that no one is to cross Sinlos again. I've already told the Hammer leaders the same. Okay. Uh, yeah, we've seen that before. Achievement unlocked. Dark. Huh. Okay, this is great. I thought there was more. Okay, see, it says Kika is Elisa Park, but we don't know Coco's real name. That could be her. <laughs> oh, that was great. Gosh, we died a few times today. <laughs> is that it? I thought there would be more with her and Margaret. I thought we had like an extra bonus scene with Bemele. What happened that we didn't get a bonus scene with Margaret? What? No! Why? I'm salt right now. I am super salt. Look at that! We got that cute image of... of Bemele holding her. But we didn't get that scene with Margaret. What? Did I do something wrong? I'm confused that I didn't get the happy ending with Margaret. Did I do something wrong? No. Because if I... When I chose Bemele to be with me, we died, so... What did I do wrong? I, I thought we were on the same page. Ugh. I worked so hard. I wanted a happy ending. I am salt. Yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna have to look it up, guys. I don't know. I mean, I have to end the stream. It's been way too long, but, uh... Jesus, I'm very salty. <laughs> Kika's a dillard sexual. I don't know if we actually got the happy ending with Margaret then. Hmm. Okay, well... I'm sorry, guys. I'm really disappointed. Uh, did I unlock anything else? Nope. Still the same. Well, that will be it for this stream. Thank you for coming. Uh, hopefully next time I will either do a more shape-shifting detective or more of this game. <laughs>